So today we're going to go through part one of NCER CounterPoint Tips and Tricks. Uh, let me uh, talk about what the agenda item is going to be here today. So we're going to start by looking at modifying a customer add on the fly forms. Um, we'll be creating a run page, uh, setting up some special price rules for day of the week. Um, we'll talk about scrapping damaged returns and some easy ways to do that. Um, we're going to talk about emailing receipts um, and then modifying uh, menus for uh, users and user groups. Um, and then part two of this event, uh, Ryan mentioned, is going to be um, advertised later. And in that event, we're going to be talking about uh, the items that you see here. So modifying lookups, creating reports on the fly, bulk updates, batch markdowns, um, and then uh, saving parameters for reports. Um, but again, we'll start with uh, uh, part one. And let me stop my share right now, and then I'm going to go ahead and share CounterPoint. So I'm going to go ahead and share my CounterPoint screen. And I'm also going to turn off my video here. Um, OK. All right, so this is CounterPoint. Um, this is the uh, the uh, the main menu structure in CounterPoint. Um, we're going to start by setting up a customer ad on the fly. So why would you want this? Um, well, let me show you what the customer record looks like. So if I look at a customer record, this is a customer record. So this is very daunting for a cashier to look at. Um, all this information, all these various tabs, um, what you want to do at point of sale or what you may want to do at point of sale if you're capturing customer information is do a um, add on the fly. And let me show you what that looks like first and then I'll show you how to set it up. So when you're in point of sale and you add a customer, um, you I hit the customer button. This is a button action that is saying go to customer lookup. And then when I hit the add button, this is my minimized view. So I already set one up and I'll show you how to do it. Um, but so that I'm not looking at everything that is in the customer view, um, I shrunk this down to just capture the details that I wanna capture. All right, so let's show you how we did that. Um, <clears throat> all right, so step one, we're gonna go find our data dictionary. Now you can go to set up system and data dictionary but I'm going to use the handy magnifying glass up here and I'm going to type in data dictionary. Okay, and so there's my data dictionary. All right, um, so I am going to, uh, let me see, I'm going to uh, choose accounts receivable because we're going to be getting um, AR, which is going to be the customer file, and then I'm going to look for AR cust. Okay. And that's here because I've already been working with it. So you want to find AR as your table and then AR cust. Okay. And then this is um, the, all about the simplify add on the fly. Okay. So the first trigger is you're going to want to say yes to this. And that's going to allow you to use that on the fly. When you come in here, you may not see this here. I didn't when I first set it up. I had to go looking for it. So it may not already be on your screen, so you might have to look for it. And to do that, you want to hit these uh, three dots here. Um, that'll take you out to your <clears throat> to your files, um, and then you want to just get go search for um, your counterpoint file. And then once you're here, if you want to just type in uh, simplify out on the fly, it'll it'll find it in the search, and then you can just pull it in that way. So once you've pulled this file in, um, you want to hit your edit button, okay? And that's going to give you that edit window. Okay, so this is, this is my edit window. Um, this is what I have um, decided that I want on my form, okay? It's my customer number, name, city, state. Let's say I don't care so much about having, um, you know, the city and state. I can just delete that. And maybe I just want to capture, I don't, I don't care about the address. I'm just going to capture a zip code. So I want to move that up and adjust it. Um, a phone number, an email address, 
um, a category, category code. Um, and I have my loyalty program on here so I can quickly turn a customer's loyalty uh, program on if I want to. And then um, oh, you want to drag the boxes, not the actual words. Okay, so there, I just minimized my form. If you want to add something else onto the form, you basically are just going to um, take this and then drag it, drag and drop it into your form. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of that because I don't need that on there. All right, so then once you have the form kind of just the way you like it, you're going to hit this X box here. Um, and that's going to then say, do you want to save these changes? I'm going to say yes. And um, so that is step one, okay? Um, so step two, um, well, you know, the next step after this, step two was editing the, um, um, the actual fields. So the next step after that is um, you wanna go into your work group settings and you want to make sure that your next customer number is turned to auto assign. Um, let me get out of this. Um, and the reason you want to do this, because if it's not, then the system is going to be looking for you to enter in the customer number. So if you are, if your business uses phone numbers as a customer number, then great. You don't want it to be auto assigned because you're going to want to enter the phone number as the customer number when you start adding that customer to the record. Um, but to do this, you're going to want to go into setup, system, and work groups, okay? Um, find the work group you're working with, um, go to the numbers field, and then next cu customer number, you're gonna wanna click um, always auto assign, or at least that's what I wanted to do in my demonstration, okay? Um, so then once you have that done, um, you should be good to just um, add customers on the fly. And let's see, it should show the change we made here. Um, yep, so I took out city and state, just wanted zip code, and this is, these are the fields that I wanna fill in. So at this point, you can just start filling in, um, let's see. Fields that the, the green fields are mandatory, but I can skip that and just start filling in a phone number um, and then email address. And then if I want to turn up, uh, make them part of my loyalty program, I have that switch here. Um, uh, if I want them to be a part of a special uh, group. Uh, in this case, wholesale, because I'm in my garden center database, I could turn him on into a special group. Um, but we'll leave him. We'll leave him just as a regular retail customer at this point. And we will make him a retail customer. All right. And I can uh, just hit save. Now John is part of my customer database. Okay. And he's actually been assigned to my transaction here. All right, um, so that is, that's really customer ad on the fly. I wanna point out also, I know this is a lot to take in and it is being recorded. So Ryan's gonna share that with you, but I've actually put together a document which I'm actually using to kind of walk through these steps as well. Um, so this document will be shared after the fact as well. So you'll have that documentation in front of you as well. Oh, I did, I skipped a step. Um, one thing you want to make sure you do is you want to go into setup, point of sale, um, and then you want to go into your store tab. And on, um, uh, let me see which tab it is, ticket three. Oh, I'm sorry, find your store. Ticket three, you want to make sure these are all, um, allow add on the fly is turned on. Okay. All right. All right, now we're done with that. All right, so that's customer ad on the fly. All right, the next step is, the next thing we want to talk about is creating run pages. Um, to demonstrate why you might want to do that, I'm going to launch my touch screen again. And I'm going to show you an example of a run page that I actually created for, um, for landscape business in a garden center. 
okay? So I have this um, order button, and then I can either create a new order or process an order. So if I create a new order, this is a run page. I've created a run page for it. So I click new. The first thing it's asking me is to pull in the customer for this transaction. So let's do, um, let's do Margaret Alexander. So we'll add her to the customer record. The next thing it's asking me is, is there a job number associated with this? So if there is, you can add that. Now this is a ticket profile field that I set up. Okay, so you can make that part of your run page. And then the next step is, um, where are we gonna ship this product um, for this order that we're placing? Um, I can go with a order address that I have on file, um, or I can start adding in the address information here. Okay. And then the next step is, um, are there any specific notes that should be attached to this ticket? Um, so I can add uh, notes. Now, there may be some changes, modifications to the form to allow notes to be printed on the ticket, but you can certainly print notes on the ticket. All right. So basically what this did is it, it kind of set me up. So now I can start adding in the items that I want um, for this order. Okay, and so that's, that's essentially what the goal of what we're trying to do here. Uh, I'm going to close out of this because we're going to go into um, touch screen editor to kind of show you how to do this. Um, so what you're going to want to do is um, we're going to go to set up a point of sale and then touch codes. Okay, we're going to find our touch screen that we're working with. That's just loading my images. They're PN, uh, uh, PNG images. Okay, so this is um, this is my touchscreen editor. Okay, essentially anything you want to edit on the screen is done with this button editor. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go to the button tab, and let's. Th this is the new order button, but because this is my run page, I put it on the main screen so we can look at this. Okay, so. Um, so the first thing that you're going to want to do is create your new page. Okay, so when you do a run page, the action is called run page, but it's looking for the run page, which is a new button page that you're going to have to create. Okay, so you're going to want to create the new page um, and then you're going to call it, um, you know, landscape orders. Um, and then once you Create that. So now I have some options. So here I can do, um, if I can remember it correctly. So or we want to do an add an order line, okay? Because this is going to be an order. And then you can, it, it adds the caption in. So we'll just leave that like that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to do customer from lookup. Okay. And then the next thing we're going to do is our ticket profile. And then um, enter the ship to address. So enter ship to. And then enter notes. All right, so that that's going to be my sequence of events for my run page, okay? And we just called this landscape orders two because I already have a landscape one. So, um, so that's that. So now we're just going to um, close this, and we want to save it. I'm going to go back in. And then, um, and then you're going to find a button to create your run page. Okay, and then all you're gonna do now is you're gonna associate that new page that you created 
to your run page. Okay. And, um, and then again, it'll perform the same, the same sequence of events um, that it did when I demonstrated it from point of sale. So that is essentially creating a run page. So you really can do a lot with run pages to just walk the cashier through the various steps they need to take in order to um, complete uh, a transaction. All right, um, that is run pages. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm not gonna save this because I already have that set up on my demo database. Um, the next thing we wanna talk about is setting up price rules. So um, price rules are an in inventory. So I'm gonna go to inventory and pricing. And for those of you who maybe aren't too familiar with this, um, this is where you would go to set up prices that are uh, triggered um, automatically. So it might be automatically by the customer type. It might be by a date driven promotion that you've previously set up. Um, and then it could be by a day of the week. Um, so you have various uh, options for um, setting up price rules. Um, we're gonna look at, we're gonna use promotions. Uh, I typically use promotions for everything. Um, these all look similar. Uh, you can do a contract promotion in promotions. You can do a special in promotions. Um, so I just, I just am more comfortable with this. So I'm gonna use this to do uh, the promotion we're talking about here today. So we're gonna uh, give it a code number and this is gonna be uh, Wednesday dog food promo, okay? Um, I don't, I'm not worried about the date because it's gonna be every Wednesday. So I don't wanna put a date in unless, unless this is every Wednesday for the month of whatever, then you might wanna put a date in, but I'm just gonna skip this, okay? Um, so then I'm gonna go to the rules section and we're gonna say it's 10%. Okay, so this is going to be my promotion, 10% for dog food only on Wednesdays. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come down to these tabs and basically set up our promotion. So the first minimum, the first column is the minimum quantity. This means do I have to buy two to get 10% or just one or three, you know, whatever the minimum quantity is in here. So there isn't a minimum quantity because they're going to get it on their first bag, 10% every Wednesday. So no minimum quantity. Um, then this is the method is going to be pick a price, um, a fixed price or a discount percentage. We're going to do a discount percentage and it's going to be based on my selling price, which is price one. And then I'm going to put um, my 10% here, okay? All right, then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the item tab. Now this is only for dog food. If I left this blank here, it would be 10% off, off everything on Wednesdays, but we're gonna minimize that for dog food. So I'm gonna go into my categories here and select dog food, okay? And then the next tab is my customers. Now, is this promo open to everybody or do I wanna minimize it just for my loyalty customers? So if I wanna minimize it for my loyalty customers, um, as you can see, there's no loyalty box here for me to, to work with, but you can, do a, uh, you can customize and add filter boxes here, pretty simple. So I could do a right click, customize, and come here and add my loyalty uh, program in here. And it's way down there. Loyalty program. Loyalty program is exactly, and if I hit right click again and minimize it, I've now added a loyalty program box. So I could say, okay, I want this to be only for my loyalty program members. Okay, but we're gonna keep it open. I just wanted to show you that nifty trick. Um, we'll keep it open and then go to the last tab. This is where the magic is gonna happen. So I'm going to select my store that this promotion is here for and just my day of the week, which is Wednesday. And then my promotion is done. 
and that's basically setting up a day of the week promotion. All right. All right, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is um, scrapping damaged goods. Um, so the process that I'm gonna show you is gonna eliminate multiple steps to adjusting damaged merchandise out of inventory. Um, so when you do like a, a, a return and point of sale, if you do it this way, it's going to refund the customer um, and but not return the items back in inventory and instead instead uh, adjust the inventory for scrap. Um, without this, there would be a two-step process because it would return the items into inventory if you did a standard return, um, but then you'd have to go in and do an adjustment. All right, to start, we're going to go to, um, uh, let me see, we're gonna go to adjust reason codes to scrap. Um, so we're gonna go into setup and then inventory, and then we wanna go to our adjustment codes here. And we want to uh, set up, Oh, I went to the wrong place. Sorry, adjustment codes, where are you? Let's try that again. So set up inventory. And oh, it was right beside it, sorry. <laughs> Phew. Okay, so adjustment codes, thank you, Ryan. <laughs> so you wanna make sure that you have an adjustment code for scrap. Um, you know, your description, and you want to make sure it goes to the appropriate on um, GL account number. Okay, and then step two is you're going to want to go to um, set up, point of sale, and then reason codes. There we go. And then um, now you're going to want to associate your reason codes, your reasons, with um, the scrap um, reason code. Okay, so I have my damaged merchandise is associated with scrap. I also have um, a scrap option associated with scrap. Okay, so what this does essentially is when you go and do a return in point of sale, and I'll go to my point of sale again. Um, and I'll go ahead and do a return. And then we'll look for a document. Let's uh, look at um, a customer. Let's do Margaret. Find her tickets. And then I um, can pull this ticket up for a return. And then uh, I'll select this. And as you can see, it's, it's automatically popping in my reason codes. So when I select um, damaged or scrapped, um, the system is going to automatically do its thing, provide the customer the return, and then um, adjust it um, out of inventory. So it's not going to go back into inventory. All right, and this is just basically my return receipt. All right, so speaking of receipts, next subject is emailing receipts. Um, I'm sure you just saw that I can email receipts here. So if I, uh, let's just scan a couple of items here. Okay, and um, I'm gonna go ahead and pull in a customer to this transaction. Let's pull in John. Okay, and then um, we'll go ahead and pay, pay with cash. And then now I have my system set up uh, because I have multiple receipt options set up here. It's popping up a display for me to pick the receipt. So email is one of them and that's what we're talking about here. If I hit the email button, this allows me the ability to add an email address here. So I could say, John, would you like me to email a receipt to you? He says, yes, I can hit that email button is your email address John B at Gmail? No, it's um, it's it's a uh, it's a Yahoo. If anyone has those anymore, it's a Yahoo email address. Okay, so I can go ahead and change that. 
And at this point, I could go ahead and update and send. So have the system automatically update the email um, in the database, or I could just hit send. Um, so these are the options. And if I send that out, it'll go ahead and update CounterPoint. All right, so emailing receipts. Um, what you want to make sure that you do is, first of all, there is some setup that needs to happen um, when you um, when you first get your system set up. You need to connect your email client um, through the management console to CounterPoint. So if that has not been done, it's not something I can show you how to do today. It's actually something that you'll need to work with our support department on. Um, so you'll want to make sure that you do this. But what I want to show you is basically how you would set up that button to show up on your email options. And so we're going to be setting up the form group here. So let me minimize this. I'm going to go ahead and hit set up point of sale. And then I'm going to go to my form groups. Okay, and I'm going to want to, um, if, if I don't have it here already, I'm going to want to just type what that form group is going to be named. Um, but I do have it already. So I'm going to select my email option here to show you. Okay, so you'll want to um, add the form group, um, call it what it is, associate it with the document type. Now you'll need to set this up for each document that you want to email the receipt on. So I'm doing this for tickets now, but you'll also want to make sure that you do it for orders and quotes, um, maybe some holds or, you know, whatever is applicable. Um, then you want to, um, you can add a button image, which is this image right here. Um, you can add a button label, and then you can add some shortcuts as well. And then the next tab is uh, what is the receipt uh, going to look like that's going to be emailed for this ticket. Um, so you, you basically just come out here, find your receipt, um, and then add that in. And that is that. So that's essentially how you would set up getting that email box to pop up on, um, on the button. All right, so then the next one that we want to take a look at is modifying menus. Okay, um, I'm logged in as a manager here. So these are, this is what you're seeing right now on my menu system. Okay, um, I, I basically created this um, menu um, based on my, my login credentials. Um, so if I want to modify the menu, of course I have the rights to do so. Um, let me show you how to do that. So first you're going to want to go to um, setup and then system and then menu codes. Okay, you want to find the menu code that you're working with. So I'm a manager. This is the menu code I want to show you because I'm going to add a folder to it and I'm going to hit the menu editor here. Okay, so this is the menu editor. This is what's currently on my menu. Okay, so this is what I currently have access to. And this is the default menu. Okay, if I want to take things away, like let's say um, I don't necessarily need time cards, I just hit a right click and I can delete that. And now the manager doesn't have access to that menu. Okay. Um, but what I want to do is I'm going to add a custom folder and then I'm going to drag and drop some reports into it so that I can have quick access to all the reports that I need to run my business. All right, so I'm gonna come up here to the main menu option and I'm gonna do go a new folder, okay? And I'm gonna call this my manager reports, okay? Um, and then I'm gonna come over here and let's see what kind of reports do I want. Let's go into sales, sales analysis and we'll look at reports. So these are, these are all the reports in CounterPoint. So I want my commission reports. Um, I want my flash sales. And maybe I want my sales rep productivity reports. Okay. Um, and then if I want to uh, maybe look at the sales of merchandise, I can go into inventory. And then I'll go into reports. 
and get my favorite merchandise analysis report. So I can see kind of what product's selling um, and so forth. All right, so I basically just added that folder. Let's see what it looks like. So I'm gonna close this and I'm gonna save, save again. Oh, sorry. Oh, this you lost your share for some reason. Yeah, okay, let me share that again. Okay. Um, all right, so, um, so now as you can see, I added this folder that has my management reports on it. So now that folder did not exist before, but now it's here because I was able to easily modify the report, the form, sorry. All right, and that's it, Ryan. Thank you everybody Thanks. for your time. Thanks, uh, we're starting to have some questions come in okay. here. Okay, great. Uh, so in regards to emailing receipts, does the customer need to be in the database or if it's a new customer, do you have the option to email receipts as well? The customer does not need to be in the database. So you can, um, you can add the email addresses um, without the customer being in the database. So those, the, that email option will show up? Yes. When you're, yes, okay. it will. I check yep. it out for people. Okay. Um, Christy, if that didn't answer your question, let me know. And then Len is wondering, regarding the discount on a particular day, is it possible to have a negative discount, say for an after hours weekend event? Um, I'm sorry, is it possible to have a negative discount? I don't quite understand that either. Uh, like you charge more? What's a, what's a negative discount, Len? If you could give us some clarification there. Um, so we have a follow-up to the, when you are emailing a receipt to a customer and they're not in the database and then you add them there, does it add them to the database? It will save the email to the database, yes. No problem, Christy. Yes, Len is saying well, the price will be higher. So he wants to charge uh -huh. more. Well, let me look into that, Len. I'll look into it and get back to you. I'll just reach out to one of our trainers to to see how that would be set up. All right, uh, Dan would like to know, does setting up the folder move the report, like using your example, or is it basically a shortcut? It's a shortcut. So it's still gonna be where it normally resides, but it'll be a shortcut for the manager. Great. Um, we had a question submitted before the, the webinar, and I think we'll cover this more in next the part two, but um, Dan wanted to know, is there a way to import large batch, a large batch of items? Say a vendor has 20 new items for summer. Is there a way to import them all at once as opposed to creating a new record for each item? Oh yeah, definitely. Data, data interchange is, is what you'll want to utilize. Um, and we can, we can help you by providing you with a template that'll make importing those files easier, or you could actually, um, you could actually export files out um, and look at the, the format as well. Um, but yeah, data interchange, you should explore that or go to the next session um, because we'll be talking more about data interchange. Great. Um, and he also wanted to know, is there a way to import when creating a new purchase order? Um, there is a way to import uh, creating a new purchase order. Um, we'll make sure that that gets covered on data in, on the data interchange as well. Great, thank you. Dan says thank you. All right, thanks. Thanks.